Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You may continue eating quietly, but we are very fortunate. Um, our next speaker is a true public servant. He has solid academic and professional credentials. He also possesses a keen sense of humor, which is helpful in his high-pressure job. He believes in collaborative efforts and working to improve the health for all Montanans. It is an honor to introduce our governor, Governor Steve Bullock. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tanya, and it is indeed an honor to be here today, join you in what are really important discussions taking place regarding the future of healthcare in our state. It's exciting to see the room filled with, and many of you that I've met and had the opportunity to work with, but some of Montana's best healthcare leaders and innovative thinkers. We're fortunate to have that powerful collection of talent to help us navigate through both the complex and the unique challenges and rapid advancements in how healthcare is delivered in a state like ours. And I understand, um, being the lunch speaker, that I come at a little bit of a disadvantage because I um, asked at my table, like, so how was the morning speaker? And it was just, he was amazing. <laughs> and he went on, I mean, it was like an hour and a half presentation, and he was still amazing. So I started to think, I mean, how do I live up to that? And so. What you hear is not a test, I'm rapping about health. We want to make sure we can do better and preserve our wealth. Now, I am Governor Stephen, I'd like to say hello. All right, so that's about as far as I could go quickly. With that, though, I mean, it certainly is no secret to the people in this room that the last few years have brought significant changes to health care in our state and nation, both in how those services are delivered and indeed how they're paid for. Montanans are hardworking people, but until recently, far too many of our friends, our neighbors, indeed family members, went to work each day without the knowledge that access to health insurance and quality affordable health care they went to work knowing that that was beyond their reach, forcing them to avoid regular checkups and screenings and often leaving them with no choice but to access care when and where it is both the most expensive and most difficult to treat, the emergency room. Now as I look around, thanks to the work of so many of you here, Montana was the only state in the country to pass expansion legislation this year. We did so with a true bipartisan compromise and a uniquely Montana approach. As we watch growing partisanship lead to increased gridlock in D.C. and throughout the country, I was honored and pleased to get to work with legislators as diverse as Senator Buttrey, Representative Cook, Representative Hunter, Senator Cafaro, and others to pass the Montana HELP Act. Although I candidly didn't love every aspect of that legis... I see, I just <laughs> saw Senator Buttrey in back. I didn't, I usually try never to say anything nice about him when he's in the room, because that could only hurt him. But um, when, when he was smiling is when I was saying, although candidly, I did not um, love every aspect of that legislation. But I also recognize that this issue is too important to live or die on any single provisions. After legislators left town, we worked extremely hard to make sure that the federal government honored our unique approach. As a result, we're the first state in the nation to pursue expansion through a third party administrator. We're the first state with our unique combinations of premiums and co-pays, ensuring the skin in the game that was so important to Senator Buttrey and some of his colleagues. Now over 70,000 of our friends, neighbors, and family members will now have access to the health care system that was once just beyond their reach. Montanans who were once previously just 
one health care worker from crisis now have the comfort of knowing that if they get sick, they can get treated early, they can access preventative screenings like mammograms and colonoscopies at little or no cost, and that if the worst happens and that they do face a health emergency, they'll no longer be faced with between choosing between the treatment that they may need and the services that they can afford. I'd be remiss if I didn't um, sincerely thank so many of you in this room for the work that you did to get this through, because this was one of those measures that everyone gave a little bit and everybody worked extremely hard. And I think we have a lot to be proud of. The success of the HELP Act will go a long way toward ensuring all Montanans have access to quality, affordable health insurance coverage. I know that uh, in this room we all agree that access to care is only one part of the puzzle albeit an incredibly important part. We have a collective responsibility to continue working together to control costs and improve health outcomes. We need to roll up our sleeves, be willing to have difficult conversations, learn from each other, and to seek to improve how services are delivered and how they're paid for, ultimately ensuring that patients are getting the right care at the right time at the right place. We're all familiar with the obstacles. Um, they're not unique to healthcare, but indeed at times they're amplified in healthcare. With a million people spread out over 147,000 square miles, large distances create natural barriers to services and can make it difficult for providers to coordinate care for patients. And we know that our pressures on our healthcare system are only going to increase as our population continues to age. Creating increased demand for health services that's compounded by a retiring healthcare workforce. We know there's other significant barriers as well. Rural communities struggle to maintain adequate healthcare staff, facilities, and resources. Indians living in reservation communities often have significant unmet health care needs. And overall, American Indians have an overall lifespan 20 years shorter than their non-Indian neighbors in Montana. That's unacceptable. And mental health needs across our state often go unmet, leading to long-term tragedies and significant financial burdens for individuals, families, communities, and the state. These are complex challenges. You didn't need a governor to come here and tell you that these are indeed complex challenges and they deserve and indeed they demand innovative and thoughtful solutions. We're going to need the ongoing efforts and input from each of you in this room to find those meaningful solutions as we go forward. I'm heartened by the discussions that are taking place here today regarding the importance of lowering health care costs while at the same time increasing patient outcomes in Montana. We know that from previous experience that these conversations and these efforts will not always be easy. But I don't think we'd be here today, and indeed you'd be here in such large numbers, if we didn't also believe that there is a path that can lead to tangible results that improve care coordination and outcomes for patients while reducing costs and while increasing transparency. We also know that cooperation on health information technology will be essential to any meaningful effort to evaluate our current system and pursue opportunities for improvements. This is not something that any single entity can do on its own. It'll take collab collaboration from healthcare providers, insurers, and government entities to get this right. To help better focus our efforts, I recently issued an executive order creating the Governor's Council on Healthcare Innovation. Through this council made up of diverse stakeholders, many of whom are in this room today, we will learn from each other about the innovations already occurring under your leadership throughout the state. We'll establish priorities for future healthcare innovation. We'll explore models for improving efficiencies and outcomes, and we'll review how proven reforms will impact Montanans, and we'll provide input on a statewide multi-payer health care innovation plan to guide our state's efforts into the future. 
The success of this initiative, like any initiative, will really require the unique efforts and insights that you as actively daily involved stakeholders bring to the table. I know that inspiring work is already being spearheaded all across the state. Tribal health clinics, community health centers, hospitals, large and small, private health insurers, and Montana employers who understand as well as anyone the opportunity cost of growing health care expenses. You all know that we have a vital need to control costs and improve outcomes. More than that, many of you are already leading the way in your practices and in your communities by innovating from the ground up. The Council on Healthcare Innovation will provide a forum for learning from each other's efforts and for building on that work to create an even brighter path forward. It's now up to us to collaborate to find innovative ways to ensure that whether you live in Billings, Box Elder, or Libby, you'll have access to quality health care at a reasonable price based on proven and effective methods. And the success of all of these efforts will depend in part on our ability to train and recruit a 21st century healthcare workforce. Now you'll hear more from uh, Department of Labor and Industry Commissioner Pam Busey later today. We're not waiting for that workforce shortage or for that crisis to begin that important work. I'd like to thank all of you for your leadership and collaboration with the state workforce and education systems. In terms of jobs, healthcare industry is the largest industry in Montana. And I know that we must work together as a private-public partnerships to meet the needs of this growing sector. When I put out a call as part of um, our Main Street Montana initiative and efforts for leaders to contribute their expertise through the health and wellness key industry network, or we call them KINs, so many of you stepped up. The KIN now includes representatives from across the state, including hospitals, home health providers, mental health providers, and community health centers. I'll be meeting soon with the co-chairs of that kin. It's Larry White from uh, Missoula and Rick Haraldson from Sydney, and they'll provide their report of the work that they've been doing. I know that enhancing and expanding our healthcare workforce is indeed one of that key industry network's top priorities. Look forward to receiving their recommendations on specific steps that we can take to address some of those challenges. Healthcare leaders in this room, and indeed across the state, have engaged in record levels and record numbers on the major $15 million grant that's transforming the face of healthcare workforce development in Montana. Nursing programs are becoming more streamlined. Colleges are transforming, I mean, allied health career paths to respond to industry needs. We're partnering, partnering with employers to provide more on-the-job training opportunities than ever before. The new healthcare ship apprentice program is creating new opportunities for trainees to earn a wage while they learn skills for a new job, enabling employers to adapt and specialize training to their own organization. We used to think of apprenticeships as just as welders or carpenters. But now we can also think of them as phlebotomists and so many other things. And that's because of the efforts that you all are doing in this area as well. The Healthcare Montana Initiative, it's designed to reach adult learners and displaced uh, workers through our partnerships with our employer communities. We can retool our workforce for the high demand jobs right there in their home communities. Which in some ways brings us full circle to the HELP Act. Both Senator Buttrey and I are excited about the workforce development services that will be made available to the HELP Act recipients, ensuring that folks are getting not only the health care that they need to be healthy and productive citizens, but they're also getting one-on-one -on -one assistance and training referrals that they need to climb up that economic ladder. How great is it to consider that the struggling single mom signing up for healthcare today and getting the support that she needs to become an advanced nurse practitioner tomorrow. And I d do indeed think that this is not only sort of a great vision or idea or a dream, but it's something that will be seen. 
I'm excited about the future of health care in our state. My excitement, um, and I recognize that there are reasons to be concerned at times as well. But my excitement's rooted in the talent, the experience, the creativity, and the motivation you all demonstrate each day as you collectively work to improve the way that health care is delivered in our home state of Montana. Thanks to you for your present efforts. I look forward to continuing our work together to ensure that health care is accessible and affordable to all Montanans. And thanks for what you all do to make Montana a better place to live, to work, to play, and to raise a family. Certainly enjoy the rest of the conference as well. Thanks for having me. said I have something for you and like at a healthcare conference I got nervous about what it might be and if there's gloves involved or... Thank you Governor Bullock <laughs>